Hello and welcome to this Spindle Hints and Tips video. My name is Zoe Young. I'm a key account manager here at Dracer. If you're watching this video, then you'll either be a Spindle professional or Spindle document distribution user. The difference between these two solutions is simply that Spindle document distribution is the new version of Spindle professional. Every single hints and tips I'll be giving you today will be applicable for both software. There is a difference and I'll be saving that to the very end to show you the new features in Spindle document distribution. So the first thing that I'm going to speak about is actually what your documents and also the email content looks like. And did you know that you're actually able to change the email content? So if you have a little think about what it looks like currently, is it just plain text within the content of your email of maybe the invoices, statements, credit notes, remittances, whatever you're using Spindle to send out documents from Sage for? If it is, you can actually change this and use the HTML formatted email content to actually add colour within it, add your logos, and also you can bring additional fields from Sage 200 within the email content. So this may be things like the actual person's name you're sending it to, it could be their account reference, it could be their account name, it could even be the ageing buckets if you're sending out something like a statement. Now let's have a look at the actual physical document you're sending out. Are you using the spindle overlays? You may not know what these are as a spindle user, so I'll be showing you in just a moment, but this will really make your document look exceptionally professional um, by adding your logos. Now you can use different templates for different customers, even within the same batch. So maybe you've got different branding within your business and that branding is different for each customer as well. And we can do this by means of an analysis code by picking up the correct branding for the correct customer. And that can apply both on the document that you're sending out or even the email content as well. Maybe you're dealing with multilingual customers so maybe both the documents and or the email content needs to be in a different language. Spindle can also handle these situations as well. What about if you're wanting to send out an extra attachment? So the most common used um, way of doing this is actually to add the copy invoices to the statements you're sending out. So, of course, what this will stop is as soon as you're sending out your statements, people calling or email requesting for copy invoices that maybe they've mislaid. Maybe you've got a promotional flyer for a new product, service, or even an event you're holding. And maybe for everything you're sending out of Sage, you also want this um, promotional flyer added to it. Maybe you've got a new price list and you want to send that out at the same time you send out uh, maybe your um, statements or maybe any other report as well. So let's have a look at these things that I've just spoken about in a little more detail. So what we're seeing on the screen just now is at the very top left hand corner just here is the physical statement from Sage and you'll notice it's only containing the raw data. There's no branding and there's no additional messages. That is because I'm going to be using Spindle, Spindle's overlays in order to do that. Spindle's overlays you can see down at the bottom. On the far left at the bottom, I'm able to see the different brandings. So you can clearly see I've got red, green and yellow branding. And what I have in Sage is an analysis code to tell Spindle which coloured branding to use. So once it's chosen the branding, it will then have a look at the next overlay. And in this case here, it's a simple Word document with the word overdue in red across the middle. And that has criteria built at the back of it to say, if there's any overdue invoices, I want you to include this overlay. The last overlay is a simple highlighter where I've highlighted the value I wish them to pay to make it clear. 
Now, as Spindle users, you'll know already how to use this, the software, and you'll know you will select the report or the batch of reports you want to send. You simply click Print, send that to Spindle Pro Auto, and then this is what happens in the background. It collates all of this information together to actually produce the PDF. Once this PDF has been produced, you can see it looks extremely professional. It may be that this particular customer needed a hard copy, so therefore it, the same information would arrive on the printer. When it comes to your invoices, exactly the same can apply when it comes to the branding, but also maybe on an invoice you would like the terms and conditions as well. If you've got multilingual customers, that terms and conditions may be in a different language. It may be that you have different types of customers, maybe online customers and then retail customers that you want to have different terms and conditions of sale. Therefore, you could also do this as well. So let's have a look what this looks like in action. So what I've got here, I have already produced a statement from Sage, and this is what it looks like when I've done everything that we've just gone through, all of those hints and tips. So the first thing you're able to see is the content of the email looks exceptionally professional. It's brought through the correct coloured branding within the content of the email, which in this case is red. I've also used the email, I've sort of given myself um, this sidebar, which I can use for marketing, which I can very easily, as an end user, change on maybe I want to change this on a monthly basis, I can change that messaging here. That means that I don't need to touch this area just here, which my Dracer reseller would have already have configured for me. And within here, you're able to see the values from Sage that I've been able to bring through, such as the account name and number, their name, also the aging buckets as well are in there. The physical statement, if I open that up, you can see it's bought through the red branding. So with this example here, we can see I've used the red branding. If this customer needed the yellow or green, this would be um, both in the email content and also the document itself. What you're also able to see, it's also brought through the relevant sales invoices that are represented within that statement. So if this isn't something you're already doing in Sage, then if you speak to your reseller, they'll be able to get these things set up for you. Okay, another thing that you're able to do is that is improve your internal communications. So maybe you've got a sales team and what you can do, let's take the example of a statement that every time I send out an outstanding statement to a customer, it can actually pick up the correct salesperson that looks after that account so they are aware that their customer has received an outstanding statement. If the statement had no outstanding invoices, it simply just wouldn't copy them in. Maybe every time an order is placed, then the salesperson needs to know about it, or maybe the salesperson only needs to know about it if it's over a certain value. So let's have a look at that. So just here you can see when the statement has gone out to the customer, directly beneath it you can see this is the email that has been produced to the salesperson. So it's, they've only received it because it's an overdue statement. You can see the content of this email um, doesn't have all the branding on it, etc. The simple reason for that is because it's an internal email, so it's just to show you the difference there. The physical statement itself, you'll notice I've used different branding again, and in this case, this is a salesperson's copy, so it's not an exact copied in version of the overdue statement, this really is the salesperson's copy. And again, it, they have the sales invoices there, in case their customer queries something with them, now the salesperson has all of the information. Okay, so what else can Spindle do? So maybe you're using Spindle to print out some information. Did you know you can actually print and email the same document in one click? 
You can also print the same document to various trays, which we often find happened in maybe warehouse situations. You can print documents to various printer locations. So it may be that I'm sat in the accounts office for anybody without an email address and I'm printing off my invoices, statements, credit notes, etc. They're printed to my printer within my office. However, if I'm printing something like a dispatch note or a picking list, I want that to go to another printer location and that will be the warehouse printer. You can also pre-print a barcode on a document. Now this is when we start crossing over with spindle document capture, which is one of our other solutions. So if you have ever have to print out a document that actually you need to scan back in to archive that document against a, the transaction, then you can do that. You would need both spindle document distribution and spindle document capture in order to do that. But it does save a lot of time. You don't need to then go to your filing cabinet to file that document. You can simply scan it. It archives it in Sage 200 and you can simply destroy that hard copy. If you're interested in spindle document capture, please speak to your um, Sage reseller and they'll be able to help you with that. So let's have a look what that looks like. So maybe when you're sending um, the picking lists, then it can be emailed to the warehouse. It can be printed to the warehouse. It can be emailed and printed to the warehouse. If I just open up this document, you're able to see that is the barcode that I am referring to. So what will happen is this will be printed off. The picker will sign it put any detail on there that they need, this can then come back to the accounts department, scanned into a scanner, now this document can be visible within Sage 200 at transaction level. I'd just like to reiterate, you would need spindle document capture in order to capture that document in that way. Maybe something like a dispatch note, and did you know when you are sending out the dispatch uh, confirmation to your customer, at the same time as sending the email to the customer, what I've also been able to do is down in the warehouse, either print, email or email and print the physical dispatch note. And just like the picking list, you can see there is a barcode down at the bottom. So this can also be scanned back in and archived against transaction level using spindle document capture. Okay, do you want your customers to pay quicker? Now that would be a great idea. So we have a pay now button, which either links to Sage Pay or World Pay. You can actually add these buttons to a pro forma invoice, a sales invoice, or even a statement. Okay, so if I have a look at the statements, I will just click into the statements. If I go to the final page, you'll be able to see the Pay Now button. As soon as I click onto the Pay Now button, that will take me through to the Sage Pay gateway in order for me to pay. So all I would need to do here is simply select the payment type I wish to make and then just add in my um, card details and make payment. It couldn't be simpler. Okay, at the very beginning, I told you um, that there's two versions of Spindle, Spindle Professional and Spindle Document Distribution. So now I'm going to show you the new features of Spindle Document Distribution. Now for anybody listening to this that is a current Spindle Professional user, you'll be pleased to know you can migrate all your current Spindle Professional users to Spindle Document Distribution users. There is no license charge in order to do this. You will get the new functionality. And what that is, is Spindle will automatically archive your document in Sage. You can archive that at transaction level, a supplier level, or at customer level. It will also give you a search tool. This is an area outside of Sage where I'm actually able to search for a document that has been archived. So let's have a look at that. So if I just go into Sage, 
And just on the sales ledger, if I just go to a historic invoice just here, what you'll notice is a view button here. So this is the new feature of Spindle Document Distribution. If I click onto that view button, what I'm able to see is a sales invoice. So all I need to do is click onto that, press view, and I'm able to view the original invoice. If somebody wanted a copy of this, all I need to do is drag and drop that out, put it into an email, and then send it across to the customer. Maybe you want to Maybe you want to um, archive this customer statements, and that's fine. You can do that as well, maybe at um, customer level. So what I can do is simply archive it so I can see it at customer level. When I'm in the customer details card, I'm actually able to see that view button. Again, if I click onto it, I'm able to see all of the statements that have been automatically archived in there. If I wasn't in Sage and I wanted to find any of this information, the other new feature is the document search tool. So if I click into that, I will be able to search on maybe um, the reference number, maybe the customer account number, it doesn't matter. And I can see here I've just put in the reference number and it's actually brought back the sales invoice just there for me. So I haven't had to go into Sage to actually find that information. So they are the new features of Spindle Document Distribution. So that's the end of the um, session. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope I've been able to give you some hints and tips on both Spindle Professional and also Spindle Document Distribution. If you're wanting to make any changes to your current setup, then speak, please speak to your Dracer or Sage reseller, and they will be able to help you with this. But thank you very much for listening. Thank you.